right. Welcome back, fellow jazz bums. We are doing uh, this week's record of the week. Um, it's Dexter Gordon's One Flight Up. Before we get into it, remember to like and subscribe. Um, we're going to link to the Jazz Bums Discord in the description below. And we live stream every Friday, so come hang out with, with us there. With that, uh, I'm going to open it up. Um, Felipe, do you have any kind of opening thoughts here to get us started? Yeah, I think a couple of things, Mike. First, uh, to get a hint of, of Dexter, a uh, taste of his life and career, get this book here. Sophisticated okay. Giant, right? He was a pretty tall guy. Yeah. That's the nickname came from. I think he was like six feet Seven. Eight or something like seven, seven. Yeah. yeah. So by Maxine, his last wife, pretty good, not so hard to read. Has a lot of cool information here. So Dexter, he was born in 23, right? Very old uh, guy compared to, to the others. He uh, started playing local bands, big bands during the 30s. Then he gets his first recording in 45 for Savoy. He records for Dial, some other labels. And then in the 50s, some sparse recordings here and there. He has problems with drugs in jail. Uh, actually, the last few years of the 50s are kind of obscure in his life. He made sure he didn't want to talk too much about it. Early 60s, he goes to Europe. Uh, he goes to France. Uh, he goes to Denmark, decides to, to set there. He doesn't come back. So playing in Denmark, he comes often to the US to record for Blue Note. He got his contract. Uh, one of his first recordings for Blue Note was this guy here. Uh, unfortunately, no cover. is a test. Is Dexter Calling. Dexter Calling was a big influence on Coltrane. Coltrane used to, to walk around with his record and play it. And uh, when he first, when the first times he met Dexter, Dexter gave him his mouthpiece. And uh, legend says that uh, Coltrane sound kind of changed after he got Dexter's mouthpiece. Dexter had this famous, like, large, beautiful sound, right? So when he's in Europe, he records his first two records for Blue Notes, doing all right, and swinging a fair. They're very, fairly happy records. It reflects his mood. He's still battling with drugs. The, Felipe, can you show those again really quick? Yes. Swinging a fair, 4133. Right. right. Yeah. That's a blue label. I have the, the Music Matters too. And that's uh, doing all right. Okay, cool. 4077. And, and then he records two records while living in France, uh, living in Denmark, sorry, but he goes to France to record them. The first one was a record made in 63. It's called Our Man in Paris, of course. And he recorded with a trio with Bud Powell, Pierre Michelot, and Kenny Clark. Those guys were the trio. They were the fixed attraction at the Blue Note in Paris. Uh, by the time they recorded this, the reason why they're so uh, only standards here but Paul was starting his recovery and uh, he was still a little malfunctioning, as people say. So he couldn't, like, he was not in the best shape for learning new stuff. So that's why they went for standards most in this record. And this is considered to be one of his most, like, beloved records, right? That was in 63. Next, he goes, to, he's back in Denmark. Just like Sahib Shihab, he had a really nice session in February 64. Uh, with the Danish radio orchestra, kind of the same setup. And then in uh, 60, June of 64, he finally records One Flight Up. One Flight Up, he requested Blue Notes to record with the band he was playing with um, those days, especially the Montmartre. Uh, Donald Bird, Kenny Drew, uh, Niels Henning Orsted, uh, Peterson, and Art Taylor. Uh, yeah. A very European lineup. To me, it has a little bit of a, an European sound to this record. It sounds a little different from, from the rest. It's a very, like, modo, has elements of post pop. Very open. Um, he lets, he gives a lot of plenty of space to other players. Uh, I'd yeah. say that even, like, Donald Bird kind of steals the show on, on this record, uh, in a sense. Uh, a couple of funny facts. So, uh, NHOP was starting to just play in clubs. Then he started getting his first big gigs. He got the Dexter Gordon. In 64, when uh, Bill Evans went to Europe first time, he was touring those countries. You know, uh, his fixed trio was not uh, moving with him. And HOP was the big festival. First big festival he played was with Bill Evans. Uh, two interesting facts about uh, Men in Paris and uh, One Flight Up. This record was recorded in Paris. 
they made a copy and sent to the US. So the original tape of this record was kept in France. What Blue Note did was a transfer tape from this one. Oh, wow. But tried up the same thing. But actually, um, for the initial release, they used the copy tape. But I actually, uh, I, I, I checked, with, checked with Joe today. He said that the, what they use, they use for Music Matters and the Tone Poe is the actual original, at least for one flight up. I haven't checked for uh, the Music Matters one Mary in Paris, which I believe must be similar case. But originally, the Blue Note stuff, yeah. And just to go um, on, on you're talking about deep groove, P, no P, there was some interesting discussion, especially at this period, just like Blue Train, uh, One Flight Up is kind of hard record to, to date properly, about deep groove, P here, one label this, side A, side B. Let's remember those, uh, especially plastic light and whatever plant they were using, people are not very careful about those things, plus they were in a rush and plates are just coming in and now people are just putting in the pressings. They were just doing them. So saying sometimes saying a very first pressing, there was a deep groove. The next one, even with the exact same thing, no deep groove is a second or repress. That is not correct. They're all just considered to be original blue notes. That's the idea. Okay. And let's go over the record. I think it was a nice story. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 Um, can I tail end to my contribution to this as well? Yes, absolutely. I just sure, about. sure. I have three copies here. Obviously, <laughs> the Blue Note of uh, Tone Poet. Mm -hmm. And I have the Liberty Pressing Stereo mm -hmm. here. Liberty. Liberty. And Liberty. I have the exact, the one Felipe was kind of talking about. This is a, I guess, a first second press stereo is the way though technically what i think i labeled it um i actually got this in a thrift store for five bucks but nice. uh the new york pressing and in the discogs listing for this one it they say it's a plastilite but there's no p in it so mm -hmm. how's okay. it sound um so here's the funny thing that when people started one it was this one of the original town poets, or at least it came out in 2019, right? That is not, mm -hmm. I, I think, no, yeah. I think it was like the second batch of town poets. So, so yeah. It was when I started coming uh into this, and when I found this copy at the thrift store, I had already had this, so mm -hmm. I it was the first chance I had to do a comparison of a Van Gelder to the uh, Kevin Gray town poet. And what and what I determined is they're two totally different listening experiences, sort of like mono and stereo. But yeah. the Van Gelder, this one is kind of hot. It jumps mm -hmm. off the, the vinyl, it's loud, it's in your face, it just is it pops. This is more yeah. smooth. Yeah. And I, and I never recorded a shootout video on this, mm -hmm. but that was really my determination. But you know, it's a nice hot sounding record. It's that it's quintessential to me, Van Gelder. This, yeah, especially this press. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's the compression. It's the compression it made everything pop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, it, how it is. So yeah. that's my contribution to this. Thank you. You know, I I saw Dexter Gordon twice around mid nineteen seventies at the Keystone Corner, and well, I don't know when he started this, but the thing that I remember the most, aside from his obviously amazing playing. And how tall he was, but at the end of a of a, a, a piece of music, when the audience was really excited about what he did, he would basically open his hands like this, hold his sax across his span, as if he was offering it to the audience, and it was one of the most amazing. Just a visualization: this tall musician with his saxophone there saying and it, it was just it was wonderful uh the, the opening track is 18 minutes it's it's tanya which is a donald bird track that predates patty Hearst kidnapping when she was tanya mm -hmm. by at least eight years so no connection whatsoever are we gonna have to re-record this whole video no that was great okay that's, what my, that's my contribution what do you got dave i have a 70s black b pressing Mm -hmm. um 
it's a mint copy. This this sounds incredible. Um, and yeah, the the Tanya is one of the best sides on any jazz record you're ever going to hear. I mean, it's just yes. it's an incredible grooving, like Mike said, mm-hmm. it has some modal elements. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's it's. I, I love Dexter Gordon. I have a lot of his records, but it, this is a top three Dexter mm-hmm. Gordon record for me. Um, actually, yeah. one of the top Blue Notes outside yep. of the avant bop stuff for me. I mean, mm-hmm. this is fantastic. Yeah. I'd love to find a copy like Rob's got with the yeah. P or not yeah. having a P, which you know, an early copy because they do jump off the stereo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those that's you know. That's what's nice about having an old blue note. It's it's yeah. it's gonna it's gonna hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he didn't record it. He he mastered it, right? It. Yeah, he got it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You just you just got the tape. Yeah. And and, and Tony, I think is is a great example, right? It's it's so, so catchy. That groove is so hypnotic in a sense. Such a great and the song the, the, the song go back and they, they and they play that that theme like. You know, fat forward, backwards parts of the song. They keep, they keep changing, but you, you always get a very uh, coherent type of structure there. And the way that the horns develop, all the solos. I mean, everything is still in line, even if you don't like jazz or whatever. It's a song that catches, I think, everybody's attention. And I think that's a, it's a common thread in the Dexter's uh, catalog, to to my thing. I think he's the most likable sax player, probably. You know. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, one thing that's interesting about Tanya is just that that vamp that just goes through the whole song. You know that beat, um, kind of it kind of reminds me of Blue Train, like the beginning of Blue Train a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just that that's kind of infectious. And then, I mean, Donald Bird on that song is just it just sounds amazing. He's just such a great horn player. Mm-hmm. So yeah, well, yeah, it is it is maybe my favorite side of a jazz record, honestly. I mean, just. I got when I got it, I just was blown away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and one interesting aspect technically on an HOP is the way he played the bass with his right hand mm. because he was able to, to pull four strings at the same time. So, mm-hmm. in terms of adding richness, tone, and, and different, um, you know, notes on the same chord compared to others, just like uh, João Gilberto played the guitar and they, they were discussing the video. He could do the kind of same thing with, with the bass. I think that's what makes his, his playing so so fascinating in a sense. Yeah. For me, um, the uh, the whole th- the album is like a I don't want to say study in contrast, but you take Tanya and Cop in the Haven and contrast that with Darn That Dream. Tanya. There's a Donald Berg composition. The uh, Top in the Haven is Kenny Drew. And, you know, you can tell that th- that's not Dexter. It's not a Dexter influenced tune. And you listen and listen to the way Art Taylor is playing the drums on, on those two tunes. And then when you go to Darn That Dream, they seem to all fall in line with uh, a Dexter mood. You know, mm-hmm. Dexter is, you know, Dexter is, and on the first two tunes is, is his playing is in contrast to, to, you know, Art Taylor and Donald Byrd, especially, but on the, on Darn That Dream, they all sort of come back and, you know, we're playing, a, you know, a Dexter, we're in a Dexter mood, a total Dexter mood. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's the one thing that stands, stands out to me. It's not my favorite Dexter on Blue Note, but it's probably the best Dexter on Blue Note. Yeah. Um, you know, just, you know, my my preference, my favorite is, um, gosh, I can't remember the, the one um, with um, Bobby Hudson, Barry Harris. Um, oh, that's uh, Getting Around. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's my favorite. But this mm-hmm. is probably yeah. the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. getting around might be a record of the week here yeah. in the next yeah. few months yes and, and just as a curiosity that the, the, the record after that goal uh it um he is it, got accepted to the library of congress in the uh 2018 oh, wow. go go 
which is also a tone poet, right? No, it's a classic series and a Music Matters. Okay. Is that a Music Matters you have there, Mazzy? No, this the, uh, no, this is a, a tone poet. Tone poet. This, okay. this wasn't a Music Matters. This oh, so a, the tone poet's a gatefold. No, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. The dog uh, uh, I have go as a uh, as a Music Matters. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like Mike, that photo on the inside yet? of that tone poet. That's beautiful. That is so great, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That one, yeah, with Dexter um, yeah. at the cafe. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I almost want to get that's, that. That's Dexter from that 1964, photo. that photograph, the year before that's that. Fantastic picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep and, thinking. And if you look, look at the look at the cuff on his um on his suit jacket. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if if you could it, it was it would have been twenty years too early, but if you could see um, uh, Chet Baker up sitting on the ledge up there, yeah. and, and you coming about, about, coming about to jump, pushing him out the window. I think he fell. He didn't jump. He like it was an accident. <laughs> huh. Mike, have you do you, do you have this record yet? I do not have the record, but I did a stream um, in to prepare for this and i agree basically with what everybody's saying about tanya it's you know beautiful i don't want to say it's slow tempo tempo it's not it's not like a ballad but it, it's it is a beautiful song and uh and after listening through it when you flip to side two you have that kenny drew track cop in the haven which i feel like i guess mike this is what you're saying like there's very large contrast and in the, the 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 tempo the kind of the, the style of it um and i i mean you know I, I thought that was a great track i that may have been my favorite track on on the record um but i mean i know tanya is like epic so it's hard to to kind of rank these but i really enjoyed that one so it's like a grateful dread track yeah, yeah. i remember gosh um and and uh, i know dave will remember this back when they were um they were doing that whole all the videos on blue note i think sherv did a video on this and he talked about tanya and yeah you know he talked about it as being i think he's he might have said sexual but then later he said you know he corrected it in the in the comments and said it's it's very sensual okay and you know, mm -hmm. and, you know yeah i can see and, that yeah, yeah i think that's you know that's that perfect that says it you know that's a good description of it mike yeah. you contributed to that series too i believe yeah i did the the blakey freedom rider that's mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah that was a great i i hate that rob when he left he took all I his, know. his videos uh -huh. down i well my, mine are still up there i i was like in uh horse parlor in hell but but that's not, that's not a bad that's not a bad thing to be i love oh. horace parlin records of course i think i did two or three yeah. Boris Parlin videos. Was he that was, he was so a big just, gap for us for people, because the three of us had most of the blue notes, but we didn't have the Parlin records. Yeah. For people watching, this is was this the fifteen hundred project or the four? No, this is the eight thousand. The what do you the eighty? No, there was a there was a gentleman I forget his name. He was in Maryland, I think. He did the fifteen hundred series project. Yeah, that was later. Yeah, I, I, I think I that. did five of them total. They're on my on my. Uh, thing still on my jazz section but this um, was this was the series with it you know that's what i was saying early at the beginning of this stream or the other stream whichever how this is going with dom doing this acid series this, the yeah, acid it's thing very similar it's very similar obviously this isn't jazz this is like indie psychedelic independent whatever you want to call it but it's really a pleasure when a group of people of fans Zoom, zoom in and take 10 or 15 minutes and just concentrate on one record and showcase yep. it. And we did it. We did them in order. That's what we're order. doing here. That's what we're trying oh. to do here. Yeah, okay. No, well, yeah. Just, just for context, for, pe for people watching, Dom Seeking a Thread is doing that. Uh, what What is that called? It's it's the Acid Archives. So it's the Acid Archives Diary. And people like Vina Ritchie and Dom and myself and uh, Alex Motor motoric but he's something else now he's marimba. Diamond marimba. Diamond marimba. Marimba. biting marimba whatever he is but you know there's Diamond. a and Diamond i mean open to it. Are some weird ass records i yeah. i realize i probably have 20 records in this entire book 
<laughs> so they're so they're going they're going through that. So if you want to check that out, that's Dom at Seeking a Thread. Um, yes. So you can check out his YouTube and uh, and check out those videos. Um, I did before um, we get out of here. I want to ask Nicole if she okay. had any thoughts on this title. I haven't heard that record in years. You know, I think the first time I bought it was sometime in the seventies. Okay. Uh, but then I had to look on my discogs. And I go, oh my god, I don't have it. <laughs> then I looked on my Amazon. And I did purchase it, but I haven't heard it. But okay. I remember the record. The record is just uh, of all the Dexter Gordon records. It's probably my favorite, just mm. because. Yeah. Um, it was a good solid re uh, bop record. I, you know, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not not much to say about it. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like it. It just speaks to his history that he was in Europe recording in Paris, and I love the cover too. Yeah. You know what I will say about him? With all these photographs of him, like in cafes in Paris, he's kind of like the James Bond of jazz, right? Right. right. I mean, oh, for sure. Or uh, or the metrosexual of the fifties. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. It's kind of the closest person now is Luther. You know, Luther could play him. You know, Luther. Um, uh, oh, yeah. 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 Idris Elba. Yeah. Chris, right? Yeah. Isn't he kind of a type? <laughs> He's like a, a Dexter Gordon type. He could play Dexter. All right. Um, so uh, any final thoughts, anyone, before we get out of here? So if you uh, uh, come to our Discord, we're going to announce the next um, uh, record of the week. Uh, so we'll probably do that tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, so if you're not part of the Discord, uh, check out the description below uh, and join mm -hmm. and join that channel, and you'll you'll see what we're going to talk about next week. Um, with that, I want to thank everybody for joining and providing their thoughts, um, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.